Awesome. Uh, we are live. Hello, everybody. Tonight, um, you are joined by Zibuni Salimoa, mortgage broker in Wellington region from Mike Piro Mortgages. And I've got beautiful Kirsten Bell with me. Sounds almost like a Hollywood actress. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not, not there, even better. Our own New Zealander, Kirsten Bell. Kristen Bell. See, you tricked me now into this. Yes, Kirsten. 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 I'm Kirsten. The, the actress is Kristen. So. That's right. There we yeah. go. There we go. <laughs> so um, Kirsten Bell from Right Now, and she will tell us all about her business, what she does, and um, how to get into this sort of business if this is something you're thinking about down the track in your life. So without further ado, Kirsten, please, let me, um, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Right, so obviously I'm Kirsten Bell. Um, so my business is called Right Meow Web Design. Um, so basically I do websites. Um, that's sort of my main um, my main thing. Um, but I also do graphic design and branding and logo design. Um, yeah, so all things sort of visual um, for a business. Um, so right from new business needs such as a logo, um, yeah, website and then social media graphics or business card designs, sign designs, um, any promotional sort of material, anything like that. Yeah. Awesome. Now, your business has an interesting name. It does. It does. <laughs> right. Now, and I mean, as an avid cat lover, I love, love, love cats. Um, some people very close to me used to call me crazy cat lady because anything <laughs> to do with cats, I used to have like salt and paper shakers, you know, all sorts of different things. Cat related. I had it. So when uh, I came across your business right now, immediately jumped at me and I thought, wow, this is a person I really want to talk, talk to. So do you want to tell us a little bit about the name of your business and how you came across? How yeah, um, I just sort of late last year, um, sort of mid, yeah, mid late last year when I was basically deciding to set up my business and I just wanted something catchy. Um, I think I came up with even a list of, of names of, you know, potential business names or something and the ones that sort of had sort of some urgent language is what the ones I was sort of drawn to. So I wanted sort of like an adjective or a, a verb that sort of described um yeah described anyway so I, I think I came across right now um so I was thinking about right now at the time I was actually branding and design rather than web design um but now I've just sort of shifted my focus but so I'd already sort of decided on the byline but um yeah so so right now I've turned into right now which just fitted me perfectly because um yeah I've always been a a massive cat lover and I'm a bit the same I've got cat things all over the place um yeah my big big fluffy white cat's not not sitting beside me today but um he, he often is just sitting beside me in the office in his box and um yeah well, I, hope, I hope he can join us later on uh, possibly can, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll listen out for any meows at the door <laughs> yeah yeah um so you slightly touched on when you've joined the business uh, when you've started the business so that was about last um last year you said so what was the journey to get into this business I mean did you just wake up yeah. and oh, right, um, what I'm gonna do what was your background it's well I've actually got a finance degree um so I worked in finance for over 10 years um you know, I enjoyed it um, to start with and then I sort of I actually worked overseas in Edinburgh for a few years and I got to the stage where I was working for a big um, big corporation and you know, I just it just wasn't very satisfying um, I, you know I was just a middleman um, within a within a massive team and um, yeah I wasn't really not having the opportunity to speak to the end user I guess or the client um, so yeah, I decided I wanted a job that had a bit more people interaction. Um, I was tossing up between various kind of jobs or industries that I was interested in, but I ended up just starting out in an admin role when I came back to New Zealand um, and thought I'd just see how that went and, and, and led on from there. And then that admin role turned into doing their email newsletters, um, their social media management, and even redesigning a couple of websites. Um, so I decided I really enjoyed that aspect of the role um, and then I actually quit that quit that job and wanted to get into a role that had more of that sort of marketing -y sort of graphics yeah. aspect to it. Um, in the meantime, um, the same company actually invited me back to do a full-time marketing role. Um, so 
and I was able to do four days a week and two days from home. I was also moving um, from Wellington out to the Kapiti Coast um, as well. So I've managed to arrange two days, two days a week um, from home and two days in. Um, yeah, and so that really gave me the opportunity to learn even more about that, um, I guess, that industry and um, graphic design and website design. And yeah, so I did that for a couple of years. And then um, probably partly to do with COVID last year and, and working from home even more. Um, yeah, probably made, made the decision really to eventually Try, try my own business and just see how it went. And um, yeah, so I've only been full-time since the start of February this year, actually. Um, yeah. And how has that been for you? Good, good. Yeah, it started off a bit slow, as you do. Um, but no, yeah, it's going really well. Um, and just, yeah, sort of, it's, it's a constant learning experience, for sure, um, in, in everything, and to, in terms of running a business, um, even probably more so than actual the, the work I'm doing. Um, yeah, and just be, be meeting so many more people. Um, yeah, I've joined a couple of women's networking groups, as you know, and Venus as well. And um, yeah, just really enjoying getting out and about and meeting meeting other women in business, especially, and um, yeah, getting to know them and their businesses and um, constantly learning from them as well, yeah. You have to wear multiple hats as well. Like as a business owner um, mm. myself, I find that, you know, people only see the tip of the iceberg. Um, they don't really see what actually goes underneath and um, what it takes to run a successful business. Absolutely. Yeah. You sort of, um, when you've come from a role where you like working for someone else, you just get given the clients or given the work and, you know, you don't have to go out and find it yourself. And given the paycheck. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's constant, you know, an hourly, hourly um, you know, you get paid every hour kind of thing, whereas it's a, it's a wee bit different working for yourself, for sure. Um, yeah, so certainly managing your time and all of those aspects of um, the business is, yeah, definitely challenging, I would say. Um, yeah. You know, working on on client, what you're doing, doing client work when and not making time for working on your own business and your admin and your finances and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a bit of a balancing act. So you mentioned um, you have a financial background. So do you think it was easier for you to, to go into self-employment? Like, did you? Um, have... I didn't really think about it too much, to be honest. Um, I didn't really think about that side of things. I just knew that I was going to be working from home. So I didn't have any big overheads you know I've got a few software subscriptions and things um, but aside from that I haven't made had to make any big capital investments really um, you know little things here and there but so that was probably part of the reason um, that it was a an opportunity to yeah to give it a go without having a big capital outlay um, otherwise I may not have done it or I may have investigated a bit further or um, yeah so yeah do you think it could be harder for someone going to self-employment without much financial literacy? Um, possibly, possibly. Yeah, I think, um, I think, yeah, I mean, I just deem it as kind of a bit of general knowledge, but, uh, you know, I probably maybe do have a bit more of a, an understanding of some financial concepts and, and running a business and accounting um, than, than others. So, yeah, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because that always fascinates me when people decide to go into self-employment is to make sure they um, also understand, you know, when I do put my financial advisor hat on, mm -hmm. um, I go, look, you know, you need to make sure you've got a blanket behind you, you know, a safety yeah. pillow, yeah. cushion if something does go sideways. Absolutely. Whatever, because yeah. as you said, um, I think in the beginning, clients don't just come to you, right? You have to actively mm -hmm. network and look for them. and. Mm -hmm make sure you get work um, sorted so you can start getting paid. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think that's probably one of the hardest things um, to get going, you know, and, and even ongoing as well, I would say. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of competition out there. Um, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just finding, so finding the right people. If you think about your um, business and if people want to get into this sort of business, what do they need to um, learn? Like, um, do you mean into like website design or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, there's so many different website platforms. So I actually specialise in Wix. Um, that's my mm -hmm. preferred platform. I have worked with a couple of others. Um, I do some 
Squarespace updates for people as well. But I generally don't touch WordPress. Um, I've yeah, done a couple, but that's just not my expertise. So um, yeah, I like to stick to what I know. And, and, and that means that you know, I'm able to provide everything within that platform um, and all yep. its capabilities and integrations and things like that. Um, and I also find Wix um, one of the easiest to learn um, for the client. Um, oh. so they want to maintain their own website. Um, I also provide training. Um, so that's sort of my, I guess, slight point of difference is that I don't, I'm quite flexible with what I offer. Um, I can do full website management and maintenance and updates for people, or I can actually train them on how to make their own, um, you know, for people that are maybe a bit more budget conscious and, um, or just want control. Yeah. Website. Well, some, yeah. some people will say, um, well, that's a silly decision, Kirsten, because you're going to lose out on those clients. Ex exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I like to, you know, I like to be serving um, and, and I think it's just comes down to trying to help people and their businesses grow. Um, you know, if they if they can't afford for me to have someone maintain it, then um, I mean, they're probably not going to sign up for that anyway, even if I offered it, you know. So I generally just play it ear by ear and see what people are, are interested in. Um, people will generally tell me if they um, if they want to be able to maintain their, their own website. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome that's um i really like that i really like that approach because i always believe in knowledge is power and yeah. if you give knowledge to people um and i guess that will recommend you to others that hey you know i went to this person um she did my website but she also taught me how to manage it myself so, yeah um, and i think it's just being upfront about what um what people are getting for their money as well you know um so if you are uh if you do have like a monthly sort of service fee or maintenance fee um you know what are they actually getting for that you know um how much of that is actually going towards their like, domain costs and things and how much are you taking as profit or you know that kind of thing um so yeah i think just being upfront with what it includes and yeah just helping helping people to get what they want basically um to help their businesses grow yeah you know you just suddenly i um i realized i've got this parallel to draw um, I guess what you just said was the gym membership. I wish gym, gyms would also contact clients and say, hey, you're actually not coming into the gym. You're paying all this membership mm. and you're not, you're not coming in. I mean, how many people out there paying for gym memberships and not really using it to the full potential versus here they could be paying for something and getting um, amazing service in return. So, um, sorry, as you, as you were talking, I just suddenly had this. Yeah, I guess that would be the idea of uh, if, it, if the gym provided a... Uh, um, you know, like a one-off um, visit fee, if you could just pay for your visits. Um, but but as you say, that would probably be a silly decision for them because then they're not, not getting that recurring income for the people not turning up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, what was the biggest mistake do you think you've made that people can learn from you getting into the self-employment and into this industry? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm quite new-ish anyway. So um I can't really think of any major things. Um, I think probably, yeah, just stressing about things a wee bit to start with and getting everything perfect and that every single social media post has to be amazing and, and that kind of thing to start with. And it's actually not as important as you might think. Um, people don't take as much notice as you might think, uh, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so just kind of not doubting yourself, just having giving it a go. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and as I said, not everything doesn't have to be perfect. Mm. If, you need it, if you need help, get help. Um, otherwise, give things a go and, and see what happens. Do you think consistency is the key? Like, as you said, you know, just as long as you keep um, doing it, you're just going to keep getting better at it. Yeah, but, but also having the flexibility to evolve with your business. Um, as I said, I started off calling my my business right now branding and design, um, and I was providing websites and branding and design but um so my services haven't necessarily changed as such I've just yeah. sort of shifted focus slightly um and that's obviously means a bit of a change to my website as well um yeah so just evolving as you go and um yeah that's that that's also um brings me to sort of the importance of, of keeping your website up to date um so having someone to maintain it or just regular sort of check-ins is definitely a good idea um so for people that i do maintain the websites for it's a sort of six monthly um 
audit and check in oh. and um, yeah, just to see if they've got any updates required and um, yeah, just have a bit of a chat to them about, um, you know, if, if their website's still reflecting them and their services and um, yeah, go from there. Yeah, because it's really strange these days, isn't it? When you try to Google a business and if they don't have a website, mm. um, to me, it always rings a bit of alarm bells. Like, oh, how come this business doesn't have a website? Are they real? Are they fake? Um, or if you go onto their website and the information looks really outdated, you start to wonder as well. Like Exactly. What, yeah. What and, and I think some businesses get complacent when they still have business coming in. Um, hmm. But they're possibly losing out on those maybe better clients or the right clients or yeah more clients um, that maybe are seeing the website and and it's not it's not working for them or there's a link broken or it just doesn't look very professional um, or yeah as you say they don't have a website so they're not not even getting found at all maybe um, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so what do you think is your who is your ideal client our uh, um, I prefer working with service-based businesses rather than e-commerce. Um, yeah, so service-based businesses um, and generally ones that have been around for a little bit. So they're sort of a wee bit established, but maybe, as you say, haven't got to the stage of actually setting up a website or they've just got a website that is not working for them. Um, yeah, so out, very outdated or perhaps they've gone cheap first time around, tried to set one up themselves even. Um and yeah, they're, they've kind of grown and they've now got the capacity and understand the importance and the value of their website and, and, and that's the marketing role really. Yeah, I mean, it is your, your 24 seven sort of salesperson advert out there. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's just a, a great place to yeah, showcase what you do and yeah. to be yeah, representative of you. Um, yeah. So could you give us any examples of sort of uh, what sort of people you worked with? Just services you don't need oh, to. Um, um, but... Yeah, so ranging quite broadly, actually. So a massage therapist and Reiki therapist, um, a builder, um, engineer, um, artists, um, yeah, other um, a consultant. Yeah, bit of a range. <laughs> that would be quite fun like you'll have to sort of wear their hats right exactly, or what they yeah. to understand yeah and so that's that's part of the process um and also, yeah and also the learning process for me is that sort of client onboarding and gathering information um yeah so I'm definitely a lot more detailed now and all the sort of questions I ask and the um you know before I even start on a website and you need to understand their business um, fully really before you can represent them um, yeah yeah wow that yeah that'll be really that'll be really cool um, so the question I love asking people is what um, makes you get up in the morning and for you you're not allowed to answer the cat because <laughs> <laughs> I know my cat gets me up in the morning it does definitely get me up in the morning yeah, yeah. <laughs> what um, get you up in the morning um I think just knowing that what I'm doing is all for me you know um as, as in um I get to decide what I do for the day um yeah on the most part but um and just yeah that flexibility of being able to plan my day and knowing that I'm yeah helping my clients and, and serving them um to the best of my abilities and yeah yeah I definitely love the the freedom of um you know, flexible work hours and, um, yeah, deciding what I want to do every day. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think when we were catching up a couple of weeks ago, I think you told me that you were done for the day and then you went out for an afternoon. Um, yeah, yep, exactly. Ride. Yeah, generally, generally when it's fine, um, yeah, I like to get out for a walk or something. Um, and then, you know, I might be working on the weekend um, when it's rainy, you know, but just but having that flexibility to do that, um, yeah, I really enjoy. Hmm. That's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and just to wrap it all up, if there was one piece of advice that you can give to someone, what would it be? I know we've covered a few little topics along the way, but if we just wrap it up and summarize it, one piece of advice. Um, I think keep learning, keep evolving. Yeah, as I said, everything doesn't have to be perfect first time around. Your business will change. It's inevitable. So, um, you know, don't stress about, 
an exact phrase or exact wording or something like that or an exact photo or um yeah your business will evolve and, and the same goes with the your service offerings um and also the software you use you know um new things come up all the time so um yeah just keep learning keep growing keep evolving that's a really cool piece of advice. And um, when you said that, I suddenly thought of myself as well, because, you know, here I am doing um, an interview with you, something to the, about your business. While before, you know, a couple of years ago, I mean, I started as a mortgage broker and advisor and everything I thought I had to be doing was only to do with mortgages, only with insurances, mm. only with providing advice. But I'm having so much fun doing this series now of webinars and getting to know all sorts of people from all sorts of different walks of life and businesses. It's actually really cool. Like, I don't have to stick to mortgages. Um, I can be a specialist in my field, but at the same time, I can also get to know other people and other businesses. So I think yeah. don't be afraid to evolve and grow exactly uh, yeah yeah and you don't yourself. have to compare yourself to others um necessarily you know um just because they're doing something doesn't mean you have to do it um yeah yeah now the only person you can compare yourself to is you yesterday mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> that's a good one yeah there you go. Kirsten, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it was nice and quick and easy. And mm. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. Um, yeah. And can you just let the listeners know again about your website and how to find you? Uh, yeah. So my website address is writemeow.co.nz. Um, or you can find me, yeah, Write Meow Web Design on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, and they don't have to be local to us, to Capiti or Wellington, right? They can be yeah, anywhere. No, no. So, yeah, I deal with anyone all over the world. In fact, a lot of my clients are in the Wellington region, but um, I don't necessarily meet them um, in person. Just, yeah, Zoom calls, phone calls. Um, yeah, no, we can do everything remotely. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. And I wish you the best of journey. Thank in you your very much. Right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>